On the Edge in association with Uncensored Magazine. But he did go to Welcome back to On the Edge. I'm your host, Patrick Henningsen, and I'm here and with Charlie Skelton from The Guardian and Channel 4, and we are talking about the Bilderberg Group. Shh, because it's a secret and you're not supposed to know. But now we all know what's going on with Bilderberg. We've gone through it in the last hour. So to our viewers online and members on the special live stream, this is the Overdrive, and we're going to get deeper into the Bilderberg Group and also... We're going to get a lot deeper into their agenda, the global agenda, and we're going to also look at some of these texts that have been coming in. I've got one uh, gentleman, unnamed, he says, Iceland. He's all, what happened with Iceland with regards to the Bilderberg agenda? The bust has turned into a boom. Now, Iceland is very interesting because I'm looking at the, the situation in Greece. Uh, Greece uh, didn't have the balls to opt out of the euro last year, so they took the haircut, they got in debt, and now they're going to probably fall out of the euro anyway. Now, Iceland's a success story. They've turned, uh, they turned around, well, they first put two fingers up to the British banking system and said, well, that's not our debt. They did a, kind of a free man on the land thing as a sovereign yeah. nation. Yeah. It's a success story. Yeah, and it's not talked about very much. Yeah. I don't, you know, I think there's a lot of people that don't want it talked about that much because, because of the way it's worked. Um, but in terms of Greece, I remember very pointedly there was a... I was down at um, uh, Occupy London, outside St Paul's, just, there was a meeting going on and, and someone came up and spoke and he, was a, he worked at a bank and he said, he came up to the microphone, it's very powerful, he said, I've just seen democracy die today. I work at a bank and I watch the numbers go down on my screen the whole day and it was the day that the, it was around that time that the Greek Prime Minister said we're going to have a, we're going to have a referendum on, on the, uh, uh, on the Greek bailout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I remember that. And he was removed. You know, he, he was removed, and it was like, and a, you know, a member of the Rockefeller Run Trilateral Commission. Uh, do I mean Trilateral Commission? Which one? One of them. For, former board of directors yeah. of the European Central Bank. Yeah. Then gets parachuted he go, in. Yeah, Papandreou, and he. Papandreou. Uh, yeah. He goes in, and he said, "I, I watched." I've watched the banks kind of turn on him, you know, and yeah. they, 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 could see, they, they could see trouble, and he was just like... Because he wanted he, a referendum. Yeah, and they, yeah. they didn't, and so the technocrat gets put in charge. Lucius. Luke Skywalker, I call him. <laughs> Luke Skywalker, yeah. So, you Super know, the, Mario and Luke Skywalker. You can, you can really see the technocrats coming out of the woodwork at the moment. Mm. Well, the, the, thing, the thing about um, Greece, that it's absolutely pivotal. I mean, if you look back through history, Right. Um, even at the end of the Second World War, at Yalta, the, the big bargaining chip on the whole chessboard was Greece, all the way back to Yalta. So here we are again in 2012, and Greece mm -hmm. is playing a very, very pivotal position in which way destiny might turn for Europe. Yeah, yeah. And also, this will be the destiny of the Bilderbergers as well, because mm -hmm. the European Union and the single currency is their baby. Yeah, yeah. That's been their baby from the beginning. So how this goes fetters out with Greece. They may, they may just decide to kind of shrink a little to preserve the integrity of their, of, of their project yeah. um, and just go, you know what, we'll come back to Greece in a bit. We'll see what happens. We got another text from Denise, and she says, Does Bilderberg, uh, do the Bilderbergers control China? Now, this is a good question because yeah. I, I, I often thought, are there any Chinese or any Russians present at the Bilderberg meeting because they're in a kind of a different country club over there once you get um, east of uh, the European Union border. Well, the, um, there were a couple of uh, Chinese delegates uh, in 2011 in, in San Maurice, which uh, was quite unusual. So, and uh, on, on the very, very limited um, uh, agenda that they do publish on their website, they, they, when they talked about what they were, they said, this is what we discussed this year, and they had conflict areas, demographic t challenges, and China. That's, so they, the word China appeared, at least in their discussion. I mean, that's, that's about as much information as they share with us. Mm -hmm. You know, we discussed China. They might as well have said, we discussed some things. Um, but yeah, so a couple of, they, the Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ying Fu, was there, uh, and uh, she seemed quite jolly in all the photos. 
I got, I got a little bit of a crush on Ying Fu, I, I've got to admit it. <laughs> but you'll see, if you look up the pictures from, uh, uh, from Sam Ritz, she's fun. Have you got a website that you put any of your stuff on with Well, it's all, on the, all the stuff on The Guardian. It's on The Guardian. Just look at it. Just, just do Bilderberg, Charlie it, yeah. Skelton. Yeah, and there's all come reams up of stuff that I've churned out. I think, I think it's really interesting because you have the BRICS nations now. Um, you know, Russia, uh, China, India, South Africa, uh, Brazil. You know, th this new sort of block forming. And the difference between the BRICS countries and the Anglo American Empire is the BRICS countries actually manufacture things. Mm. Okay? The, the, the manufacturing from North America, North, the United States, uh, has been offshored to, for the most part to China, Indonesia, and a few banana republic, republics in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, Brazil uh, has the largest, General Motors has migrated to Brazil. It's uh, the large, one of the largest uh, auto exporters in the world, oil producers, minerals, you name it, gold, lithium, etc. In China, rare earths, they control 90% of the world's rare earths. And Russia is now the number one producer of oil on the planet. They just surpassed Saudi Arabia last year. Really? Okay, so the BRICS countries, and South Africa is also the deal maker for Africa. They're the most dominant political country on the continent. So uh, in, the, in that BRICS and India, another billion people and a huge workforce. In the BRICS, if the, if the BRICS could start their own Bilderberg group, I mean, do, do they have their own Bilderberg steering committee? Well, they their own the, version of the Bilderberg group? They do have the, the well, the Trilateral Commission is the kind of uh, American-Asian sort of branch yeah. of, you know, sister of Bilderberg. Where Bilderberg is, sits, you know, around the kind of Anglo-Dutch sort of area of the globe, that sits further over, you know, the American East. So yeah, they, so it's a big new Brzezinski, Jimmy Carter, Henry Kissinger was a trilateralist as well. Yeah. So the, 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 that's know, this, an interesting it's organization. So, it's so there's so much stuff to get your head around. I can I, I just have to go. Okay, look, do you know what? This, this is. This, there's enough just in Bilderberg. Mm. You know, the, and then, then you just then you talk about the Council on Foreign Relations. You talk about the European Council on Foreign Relations. Oh, they have in the European. Yeah, yeah. It's just, that's, that makes interesting reading. Um, and uh, yeah, that's there's there's so many of these things. That's what I. They're so busy. I hate to use the word they, mm. but uh, but within this group of let's call them the the technocrat class, whatever you want to call them, the managers of the of the world planned economy. They just constantly getting together, putting steering committee after steering committee with project after plan after. Busy steering. I know. Busy. I wish they did. You know, everyone says, oh, they're just out playing golf. I wish they were. Yeah. I wish they just played golf. Yeah. I think the world would be a better place. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more on that. Now, let's get to our man, Obama. I, I, I've done, I just got back from the States. I did an investigation on his birth certificate and his social security number. Uh, which I did a great uh, report with Infowars, had Dr. Jerome Corsi and some of these great guys in there. Now, Obama, how has this worked out for the Bilderbergers? Because I, I am under the opinion that Obama has done a brilliant job for his bosses in four years. He's fast-tracked things on the agenda that George W. Bush couldn't have dreamed of getting across that quickly. What I, think, do you I, I guess if you were to put it under the heading of broadly police state, that's where I'd see one of his, one of the strengths of that administration mm -hmm. and um, of uh, personal data and that kind of, the building up of this extraordinary machine of, uh, of, of kind of data gathering and data sharing and data analysis and, and profiling. And all of that, um, using the internet as this huge tool. And, you know, we talked a bit about the, the kind of internet generation of young Turks who are now being coaxed into Bilderberg. And, and you know, that's why, because there's this massive tool of, of you know, whatever you, I don't know what you call the, the internet, you know, but, you know, one of the things it is, is it's, it's, it's a massive data mining exercise, yeah. apart from anything else. You know, it's also a great thing for sharing stuff like we're talking about, you know, mm -hmm. fantastic for that. Uh, but it's also it gives this, uh, a, a, a it's a profiling tool as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we must be these dreadful little blips on their chart, yeah. as would be everyone watching. You're yeah, all a blip. We're part of a pie segment. Yeah, yeah. On, on there. And um, so, I think they're, they're they're happy with the way this is 
you know, coming along, and it's coming along the pace. I th Obama, I think uh, the establishment has a lot of invested in Obama and a lot of political capital invested in Obama. He was groomed out of college. He worked for Henry Kissinger. He uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski. He has C very, very much CIA pedigree within, mm -hmm. within his family, and maybe that's the reason why all his college and university records are frozen. Um, that was his first executive order he signed when he, when he really? got into office was the uh, sealing of all his personal records. And he has spent uh, uh, millions, uh, I think as four or seven million dollars uh, from uh, uh, Coe Perkins, a law firm in Seattle, to basically um, in court to give him the right to freeze all his college records, okay. transcripts, student loans, applications, grades. We don't even know if he went to class. So a lot of this came out in this investigation. I did it with uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio in Phoenix. Um, we did the film with Infowars, but a again, a lot of people who hasn't, haven't been privy to this material would never connect someone like Obama with the Bilderberg Group because he's come from the streets of Chicago, apparently, and that's the media narrative yeah. that they've uh, fashioned around this guy. But yeah. yet he is, he's got a seat at the table at Bilderberg. At least he was there in 2000, in eight, right? Yeah, well, and you, you've got, yeah, absolutely. And you've got, you, you can see the uh, first job, you know, Kissinger Associates. And, you know, you've got Henry Kissinger there and with his, you know, bony hand on his shoulder, sort of steering him along. And, and he, I, I find it remarkable. And I, you know, not many years ago, I was one of the people that would have thought this, where you, you buy into the narrative of, uh, of this guy just coming up and, and, and somehow managing to, you know... The underdog. You know, yeah. amazing how he just come through. It's almost like champion lawyer kind of civil rights. Either he's being reinvented now as a civil rights activist sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. He was and, a, he, apparently he was a constitutional yeah. law teacher, although I find that yeah, hard but he's got, to believe. Yeah, I guess he, he knows his enemy. <laughs> okay, um, now I'm going to... Uh, moving on swiftly to the Occupy movement. Right. Okay, um... I, that's where I, I first met you down at Occupy yeah. London, and uh, the Occupy movement. Where does this this sit? Because I, I I believe that the Occupy movement, and I said this on uh, on U.S. radio about a month ago. As I was asked about the Occupy movement, I said I support the Occupy movement 120 percent, but I wish it would grow a brain. Yeah. And it, the Occupy movement really, if it's to be successful, it needs to challenge their true engine of poverty in our society, in this country, and I'm talking about the, the Bank of England and the Federal Reserve, the central banking, which mm -hmm. controls inflation, which makes you and me poorer each week, yeah. and uh, allows us not to be able to save any money, not to have any real liquidity, not to move up or you know, do the things that, that we would like to do, because it would always be the law of diminishing returns. So if, if the Occupy movement could somehow face off with the central banking system, yes. would they be more effective, or to, or the Bilderberg Group, for instance? These, co these are conversations which are, you know, I, I'm not hugely involved with Occupy London, but I am a bit. Um, uh, I occasionally go along to their economics working group, which is fun and full of intelligent people talking about exactly what you're talking about, and um, I think that it is groping its way towards these deeper problems, they did, genuinely. A, they were at the Bank of England uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Two, three yeah. days ago, I yeah. believe, yeah? And, you know, they, I, they, I was very they made encouraged a statement. to see that. I thought, well, they made a statement about um, when um, they announced that um, uh, a, a former, I'm going to get this wrong again, I'll, probably, but um, the former managing director of Goldman Sachs or something was being, had been put forward as a possible new head of... Uh, Lloyd Blankenstein? Uh, uh, I don't think so, okay. but new, new uh, to replace um, Mervyn King at the... Bank of England, okay. and the um, Occupy put out a statement saying, you know, this this would be a disaster uh, uh, because they get it. You know, they Occupy does understand that Goldman Sachs is a is a is a monstrous entity in mm -hmm. the in the world. You know, it is the the giant squid, uh, and uh, it was very heartening to see that statement coming out of Occupy. And mm -hmm. what one problem I had with Occupy Instead is, of is just the 99% versus the 1%. Which is but, wrong. But focusing. But they've also, they've started changing their numbers. Yeah. Occupy has now started saying the 0.001%. But now they're getting somewhere. Yeah. Because when yeah. you're talking about the 0.001%, 0 
it's meaningful. It's, yes. The 1% isn't meaningful. It's, yeah. a, it's a, just a nonsense statistic yeah. if you look at the, the, the numbers it's, in the it, world. It's a Saul Alinsky uh, slogan yeah. of to divide and conquer. It's but the, yeah. the 0.001 or 0.001 or however you want to express it, then, mm. then you're going, okay, fine. That's where, that's that's where the, chart, the chart of wealth goes whoop, up at that point. Mm. You know. And it's a more intelligent, it's a more intelligent um, analysis of the, yeah. of, of the society. Instead, you know, it is not point not yeah. one percent. That the, the concentration of wealth is such. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. you've, and it, once they're talking in those terms, then, uh, and they, uh, uh, they can start talking about the influence of Goldman Sachs. They can start talking about the influence of Bilderberg. They can see Mario Monti. They can see. Uh, Greece, that what's happening mm -hmm. there. They can see the technocrat. Yeah, they can what see is the them. technocrat? They, they, can, they know yeah, who it is. They yeah. get that. They, and they're, they're big on, Occupy is big on democracy. It's big mm -hmm. on direct participatory democracy. Uh, they like to feel engaged in the democratic process. And Bilderberg is the exact opposite of everything they stand for, uh, actually. And they kind of, I feel like, I feel like they're getting that. And you know, suddenly we've mm -hmm. got this, this, this phrase, Occupy Bilderberg, which is, you know, going to manifest its, itself in uh, Chantilly, Virginia, in some form, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And with those two words coming together, Occupy Bilderberg, it's a real, that's a very new and exciting phrase. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you wouldn't have thought that a couple of years ago. Yeah. We would have got that far. So, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very excited about that. And I think it's very, it's a big step forward for activism generally. I think that would be funny if they actually managed to occupy Bilderberg. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> That, that happened, uh, well, I'll, talk, I'll tell you a little story about the Copenhagen Climate Summit right. in 2009, but yeah, they tried to occupy that. Okay. okay we're going to take a short break, and we're going to be back with you in a few seconds. We're going to go into a little more detail about some of the things we've been, just been talking about, so we'll see you in a second. On the Edge, in association with Uncensored Magazine. On the Edge, in association with Uncensored Magazine. Welcome back to On the Edge, and we are in our second hour of Overdrive. We're here with Charlie Skelton. We're talking about the Bilderberg Group, and we're also kind of talking about now the Occupy movement. And I've got some interesting text messages from some of our listeners. One of them is from Ian, and he says, Is capitalism failing? And this is an excellent question because I hear this all the time. And I hear this on the US media, and I hear this from the Occupy movement and the protests on the streets. Capitalism is failing. And so we need to get rid of capitalism and we need to replace it with something else, communism, you know, um, which is kind of what's inferred. To, what, you know, what about this? I hear this all the time. You've seen loads of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and I, 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 well, my answer to this is always, simply look at what's happening to the wealth that's just over the last four years. Uh, there's been a huge transfer of, of, of wealth and resources into, into the hands of the bankers. You know, yeah. these bailouts are... The trickle uh, up economics. Yeah. yeah. But just like with the gun at the back of their head, they've been handing money to the bankers. Yeah. And, you know, and Bilderberg is one of its things. Is it's a it's a collection of very very powerful bankers, Deutsche Bank, HSBC, Barclays. They're all there, mm -hmm. um, and the, they're they're making out like bandits. The it's not fa it's a massive success story. It it's looks a bit creaky and it, 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 it it's a bit edgy at times. You know yeah, the, the, what, yeah. what's being you know the world financial system at the moment. But actually, in terms of how where the money's going and it's yeah. working just great. It's a, yeah. it's a huge success story. The, 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 the door might be a bit creaky, but the engine's running fine. Oh, yeah. With, with regards to the system at the moment. I, yeah. Well, I think so. I mean, you know, what do I know? See, the Greek, how, how I would say the, the, Greek, the Greek haircut, the Greek bailout, this is basically how it works. Uh, I'm the European Central Bank, and I am basically a consortium of uh, a group of banks. We'll call them uh, Deutsche Bank. We'll call it Lazard, Society Generale. Um, Bank of Zurich, okay, you're Greece, so you need a bailout because you can't pay your bills, you can't pay your public servants, you can't pay your salaries, your transport is not running, so I'm going to give you a bailout. This is the loan. Here you go, Greece. That's it. I'm giving you all that money. I'm such a nice guy, yeah. okay, but you basically, you're going to give that back to me yeah. because you already owe me compound interest yeah. running all the way back to 1960 and plus all the new stuff that I've given you, 
I'm going to take that right back. And that money is just going to be circulated. In fact, I could do better in the long run yeah. and actually um, take more liquidity back off you in terms of uh, state assets. Yeah. Your national gold mine, your, your, your water system, your electric grid. Yeah. I'll have all that. So it's money, at one level it's money laundering, they're just washing money through <coughs> yeah. sovereign nations. Is, on, another, on another level <coughs> it's, um, it's asset stripping. And that's I, the I big part. The yeah. asset stripping is the big part because yeah. that's the real wealth. Well I remember hearing, I was, I was in the car and I was <coughs> listening to Resonance FM, which I sometimes do to listen to their strange things they put on, and Max Kaiser was on there, The Economist, and he was in Athens and he, he was there and he saw the big vulture fund kind of asset stripper bankers literally saw them there in Athens whilst people were throwing stones up one end of the street and, and tear gas was being fired. They were there just carving it up. And absolutely, it's, and you know, you, we started yeah. to see now, to, today and, and yesterday, that you know, vulture funds, we're getting that, that started to be mentioned around Greece. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, absolutely, they're just going to pick it over its bones, you know. Yeah, the, you know, the, it's a really interesting, there's a very, uh, you've probably seen the film um, by, I believe it's Richard Curtis, The Power of Nightmares. Uh, he's a channel Adam, for Adam Curtis. Adam Curtis. <laughs> the Power of Nightmares, everybody knows that, but he made another film in 1998 called The Mayfair Set. Right. And this was about uh, Tiny Roland and Walker and um, uh, James, Sir James Goldsmith. Mm. <clears throat> These were the original corporate raiders, the original junk bond, mm. pre the purveyors of the American junk bond collapse in the 80s. And they basically invented, uh, put game theory into the markets. Because before that, mm. if, um, if you owned uh, stock in the markets, it wasn't uh, something that was sort of uh, gambled on a daily basis. It was like you had stock in IBM or you had stock in British Steel. That was worth something. Yeah. And that stayed in the family holdings. You might sell off a few yeah. shares. But it, it, then this uh, uh, Walker was the, the, the accountant from Surrey who became the richest man in England in, in a matter of a decade and working with Goldsmith and they were just basically, um, you know, taking over companies, mm. hostile takeovers, yeah. but it was based on game theory. And from then on, the markets, the markets had its own intelligence and it's whatever the market wanted mm. or whatever the market made. Yeah, yeah. And so now we're in that paradigm. We're in the next generation of that paradigm now in 2000 where the system is done feeding. <clears throat> there's nothing, there's no more wealth or value really in the stock market. So all that's left to feed on, they've done, they've done Africa, they've done South America, they've done as much as they can in Asia. Now it, the system is feeding on itself. Is, it, is that mm. a fair yeah, analysis I, of where we're at now? I, I think, well, it's, you know, these are obviously huge problems that we're having to describe using, you know, almost mythic terms. It's you know. like the album Pop is eating, or that group yeah. Pop is eating itself. It's sort of like the, the banking system's kind of now just kind of feeding. It's got, you know... Have well, Adam Curtis is interesting. You, you mentioned him. Uh, he, if you look at what he talks about in his movies, he's on the right track. He's on and, the right track. Yeah, and, and he's, yeah. I think, and I haven't even seen this yet, but I'm about, I, do you know what, I'm going to go and watch it. The, I think his last thing has been on um, uh, think tanks and foundations. Okay. And, and once you're into think tanks and foundations, you're really getting... You're getting closer, and you're getting yeah. closer to yeah, the... You're getting the source. Yeah. <coughs> the source of public yeah. policy. Yeah. yeah. And you can, you can see the think, the think tanks in the history of Bilderberg, they're, 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 they're very powerful. You know, the Rockefeller Foundation, Ford Foundation. <coughs> uh, we've got the Hudson Institute, and to, uh, one of the big players in Bilderberg is the wife of... Um, I'm sure she'd love to be described as this. The wife of Henry Kravis, who's uh, the head of KKR, a big, um, uh, big American investment fund. And, um, but she's much more powerful than he is, and you can, see, you can actually watch this in the images, how powerful she is. And, um, Have we got a, I think we've got a picture of her through uh, um, Q105. No, I yeah, think that might be... Is that... No, that's the Queen of... Uh, that's Queen Beatrix. That's Queen Beatrix. They're on the right there, yeah, that is the... Uh, and she, she's a the, regular at the Bilderberg meetings, it's right? Kind of her, it's kind of Beatrix's thing. You that, know, she's sort of... It's her and Rockefeller and That's her annual, uh, annual bake sale for the New World Order, isn't it? Yeah, she's yeah. there with the brownies yeah, and Kool-Aid. Absolutely. And this, a, lot, a lot of people wonder why, you know, why is the Queen of Spain there? Why is the uh, Queen of Holland there? You know, what, why is royalty there? And it's a, it is an odd... A slightly old question. One, some people think it's so that uh, 
they can have these levels of security. You know, mm -hmm. just, it's just handy to have a queen around because mm -hmm. it means you can pump everything up. Yeah. You know, you can have the navy there. Well, that's a good point, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, and it's for well, the... But also, the, it is, you know, the, there's a lot of old, big money uh, and, and ownership in people like Queen Beatrix. In the royal family. You know, royal, du royal Dutch Shell. Yeah. You know, her relationship to that company isn't exactly straightforward, but... But she's probably a, a big shareholder, well, I would some imagine. Some people say, you know, yeah. some people say, yes, a very big shareholder. Or a bondholder. I d do you know what? And this is another thing. We, you know, there's, there's a difference between shareholders, uh, like you and I can buy shares. Um, you can, we can be a shareholder in a bank or a company, but then there's the bondholder. Mm -hmm. the, and this is like the bondholder of the Bank of England, I would like to know who this family is or who this individual or individuals are. Um, the bondholders are the ones that own the bank. Yeah. They're not just the shareholders. So I, I think I would, I would get, venture to guess that there's a few bondholders in, in, at the Bilderberg meetings. Yeah, and well, one of the, interestingly, you mentioned that one of the things that Occupy London has been talking about is transparency of the Bank of England. And is an, it's a not particularly transparent no. entity. It's probably slightly yeah. more transparent than the Federal Reserve. But, but it's uh, a private bank, right? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it is on record. Uh, uh, it's, a number of official admissions have confirmed, and it used to be, I believe, on their website, that it was a privately owned bank. It is not a state bank, right? Well, I'm going to pass on this one because it's a, it's, a, it's a tricky one and there's all kinds of different opinions on it. But um, anyway, it's good to know that, that Occupy London, at least it's got that on their, you know, on their radar yeah, as well. You know. Yeah, exactly. But, oh, something we're going to talk about Occupy is the, um, uh, the, the fact that there actually what is quite a, a, a political self-awareness there of the danger of co-option. I mean, you spoke at the at Occupy at yeah, wrote, wrote on a, that subject, and I wrote an article in the Guardian about, about it, that. Yeah, yeah. and um, uh, which is very important, you know, because a movement like like Occupy, which can be steered and co-opted and infiltrated, and has been, I've seen it myself firsthand. Yeah. Uh, it has to be self-aware, and that's the only gar guard you have against co-option is yeah. to be self-aware. So, so and assume and absolutely assume that whatever room you're in, you know, is in. Yeah, yeah, always. Yeah. yeah, and uh, it's a bit like uh, <clears throat> Occupy Bilderberg. You know that if it gets big enough, there'll be troublemakers put in, yeah. and there'll be provocateurs. There'll be argent provocateurs. But the thing about Bilderberg, and this is why it's an extraordinary event in terms of the people around it. They are hugely switched on. Mm. The people there, and they are the H high level of political high awareness. Le very high level. The, the highest level of political awareness I've encountered. Every you know, I get to spend a week. Every year, with people that know, they know their stuff, right? Okay. And it's great. And you just sit. It's like being in a warm bath of information, and you just go, "Oh my God, thank God, these people." At least someone knows what's going on. Anyway, um, but you know, good luck trying to get away with Argent provocateur stuff outside Bilderberg, because everyone there is going to be completely waiting for it. They'll be able to spot, go, look, spot, you, spot the federal agent. Just, yeah, they'll yeah. step away, going, "Come on, what are you doing?" Yeah. Um, anyway, um, but one of the things that uh, Occupy London did was. Uh, um, to say to it was there was a very strong attempt to co-opt it by the Socialist Worker Party and the hard left of British politics yep. and they said you know we're not going to have that take down your banners take your take your placards take your flags we're not political get off our forecourt kind of thing and they did that and it was a very powerful thing they did and they and they kind of beat away the co-option of the of the left because you know, in its way, Occupy is, is, is trying not to be left or right. Mm -hmm. In the same way that, you know, anyone talking about anything we're talking about now, you know, if you look at Bilderberg, it's so beyond left and right. Mm. You know, oh, the, yeah, idea, yeah. the idea that, you know, that, I mean, no. you know, it doesn't matter who's there. If, if, if you accept the reality of, of Bilderberg, it means that uh, you basically reject the false left-right paradigm Completely. That, that, that our, our, our rulers or mm. our society has fed us, yeah. which is basically... <clears throat> In this country, in Britain, and in America, it's the same thing. Yeah. So you have the Democrats and you have the Republicans. Yeah. In Britain, you have <clears throat> Labour and you have Conservative. Well, in Britain, uh, Labour is Chelsea and Conservative is Man United. Okay? And basically, uh, it doesn't matter who wins the league title. Mm. As long as the stadiums are full, people are buying the jerseys, yeah. and the television ratings are high, yeah. the owners of the league 
the owners of the league then don't care who wins. Yeah. And, and basically, Man United and Chelsea are allowed to fight over the scraps, which are basically jobs for life, government mm -hmm. contracts, uh, uh, good re uh, CV yeah. positions for their few, uh, so that they, once they're in government, they can then sit on the board of directors of numerous different companies. But over the owners of the league, I, I could say Bilderberg represents the owners of the league. Yeah. In, in that sense. Yeah, so, I mean, you've got, you've got around the same table, you've got, not that people of different political uh, persuasion shouldn't talk, obviously they should talk, you know, uh, and there's, you know, uh, and people with different world views, I mean, of course should be around a table. Uh, but, you know, when you've got Peter Mandelson and, and from, the, from the British left and uh, George Osborne and, and Cameron from the, from the right and Tony Blair over here, and you know, or further back, you've got Dennis mm -hmm. Healy, and you've got. Uh, it doesn't matter, left, right, left, right. Doesn't you know? They're just. Oh, yeah, Margaret, just Margaret Thatcher said it herself. My greatest, uh, my greatest achievement is New Labour. Um, ten years of New Labour, um, advanced conservative policies and uh, privatization efforts that she couldn't have achieved during her time. Was she? Um, so they, 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 the Tony Blairs of the world, the Peter Mannes of the world. Are, are in the Bilderberg Group. <clears throat> Mandelson's a globalist mm -hmm. operator. Tony Blair and Associates now, mm -hmm. you know, essentially a, a, a globalist, a, a deal-making holding company, on on uh, being whose bills are being paid by the UN. But you look at Tony Blair these days. He gave evidence that the, whatever it was, Chilcot. My favorite the person. He's, the like he's, he's my he's favorite like guy he, in the world, by the way. He's terrifying. He's my favorite person in the world, Tony Blair. I've got a poster of him in my bedroom. He's, I, I don't know, I just... I, I'm just sick I of seeing them. these people that they're, they're, they're not really... They're, you know, you feel like you want to go like that in front of their face and go, are you, are you genuinely with me here? You're not... You know, there's, a, there's a, an amazing book called, um, by a, a, a Jewish scholar called um, Martin Buber called I and Thou, in which he analyzes human relations on the most primal level, and it's an, uh, he calls it, you know, this I-Thou mm. relationship, two people together being commu in communication, addressing themselves towards... It. And, and you, <laughs> and you have someone like this. you have someone like Tony Blair, uh, and I remember I, see, I saw David Cameron before he was, before he was leader, I think even leader of the Conservative Party, to, to a speech. I was with a friend of mine, and we came away going, he's not really, that wasn't a real person, was it? And, yeah. I, and I've got some other friends who, who met David Miliband in the park. I won't say who they are, but they met him in the park, had a chat, and they came away afterwards and said, it was weird. My, he, he didn't respond like a. Like he, he sort of like he failed the Turing test, yeah. you know. It's like, gonna, come on, you, you feel like you want to you, you want to hit them with a prod them with a fork to at least make them respond in a human fashion. I'm going to have to agree with you because I I I was misfortunate or fortunate enough to have met Tony Blair, John Major, and Margaret Thatcher, but the 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 one that left the most limp wristed, literally limp wristed, handshake everything impression was Tony Blair, fake smile and everything. And I just felt like it was pointless to meet him, yeah. or even for the few seconds we met and shook hands. This was in uh, Downing Street's back garden, yeah. and um, I thought, what was the point of that? Mm. You know. Well, and at least Thatcher, to, Thatcher, to her credit, whatever you say about Thatcher, there is this the uh, the story that she went to Bilderberg and then just came away and went, you know what? I'm not, I'm not that into giving up British sovereignty. Yeah, and I, I, and I, I half believe that that would be. Yeah, the I mean, case. I, well, you know, whether I mean take yeah. that with a bucket of salt but, sure. you know, but um john john major uh he's um board of directors of the carlisle group yeah which uh, oh, yeah, the, you gotta love the carlisle the group. carlisle group is, is a major player on the yeah. global scene they've, they've also uh made some major media acquisitions um I, there's a lot of news um, bush senior i think is carlisle group yeah. bush senior is one of the founders of the carlisle yeah. group yeah so they're they're in the mix there but anyway, we'll, um, we'll talk about some of these things when we come back from break. And uh, when we come back from break, we're also going to look through uh, some of these text messages come, that have come in from some of our viewers uh, who've raised a lot of interesting points. So just wait for us, and we'll see you in a second. On the Edge, in association with Uncensored Magazine. 